एंड वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ माइंड मैप टूडेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज फ्लड्स इन इंडिया फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द टॉपिक देन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द कॉजेज ऑफ फ्लड्स देन टाइप्स ऑफ फ्लड्स स्पॉन्स सिटी कॉन्सेप्ट कॉन्सिक्वेंसिस ऑफ फ्लड्स फ्लड मैनेजमेंट एंड वे फॉरवर्ड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मूविंग ऑन टू द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द टॉपिक A flood is an overflow of water onto land that is normally dry. It can happen almost anywhere. Floods have long been a recurrent natural calamity in India, affecting millions of people every year. With its diverse topography, vast river systems and monsoon climate, the country is particularly susceptible to floods. India has the total geographical area of 329 million hectares. The extent of maximum area affected by floods in any year during 1953 to 2010 is 49.815 million hectares this estimate was given by the working group report 2011 on flood management and region specific issues for 12th plan now moving on to causes of floods many different situations can cause a flood here are just a few heavy rainfall ocean waves coming on shore such as storm surge melting snow and ice as well as ice jams dams or levees breaking geography can also make an area more likely to flood for example areas near rivers are often at risk for floods the primary factor is the annual monsoon season during which heavy rainfall leads to swollen rivers and overflowing reservoirs india's complex river systems including the ganges brahmaputra and yamuna exacerbate the problem deforestation urbanization and encroachment on flood plains also contribute to increased flood risk additionally climate change and changing rainfall patterns pose additional challenges intensifying the frequency and severity of floods now let's discuss about the types of floods there are two basic types of floods flash floods and the more widespread river floods flash floods generally cause greater loss of life and river floods generally cause greater loss of property A flash flood occurs when runoff from excessive rainfall causes a rapid rise in the water height that is stage of a stream or normally dry channel. Flash floods are more common in areas with a dry climate and rocky terrain because lack of soil or vegetation allows torrential rains to flow over land rather than infiltrate into the ground. River flooding is generally more common for larger rivers in areas with a wetter climate. it happens when excessive runoff from longer lasting rain storms and sometimes from melting snow causes a slower water level rise over a larger area floods also can be caused by ice jams on a river or high tides but most floods can be linked to a storm of some kind now let's discuss about sponge city concept the term urban flood consists of two parts urban and flood Flooding in urban areas is caused by intense and or prolonged rainfall which overwhelms the capacity of the drainage system. Our cities are densely populated and an urban flood affects a large number of people in a very small area. It often leads to major economic losses which have both local and global implications. The term spawn cities is used to describe urban areas with abundant natural areas such as trees, lakes and parks. or other good design intended to absorb rain and prevent flooding a growing number of urban areas are experiencing devastating floods as climate change brings heavier rainfall and growing flood risk an equal benefit of spawn cities is that they can hold more water in rivers greenery and soil instead of losing it to evaporation meaning they are more resilient to drought now let's have a look at the consequences of floods The adverse effects of flooding include loss of human life, property and infrastructure damage, road closures, erosion and landslide risk, crop destruction and livestock loss, threats to aquatic species and biodiversity, health risk due to water contamination, housing displacement and economic impacts. Now let's discuss about the flood management. Flood management including erosion control falls within the purview of the states. Flood management and anti-erosion projects are formulated and implemented by concerned state governments as per their priority. The union government supplements the efforts of the states by providing technical guidance and also financial assistance for management of floods in critical areas. The structural measures for flood control which bring relief to the flood prone areas by reducing flood flows and thereby reducing the flood levels. 
to strengthen the structural measures of flood management ministry had implemented flood management program during 11 and 12 plan it provides central assistance to states for works related to flood management anti erosion drainage development anti sea erosion etc for non structural measures central water commission is the nodal organization entrusted with the task of flood forecasting early flood warnings in the country facilitating timely evacuation of the people and shifting of their movable property to safer grounds and discouraging creation of valuable assets or settlement of the people in the areas subject to frequent flooding that is enforcing flood plain zoning regulation now lastly let's discuss about the way forward floods continue to be a significant challenge for india impacting millions of lives and causing substantial economic and environmental damage Addressing the causes and consequences of floods requires a multi-pronged approach that combines scientific research, infrastructure development, policy reforms and community participation. By adopting proactive flood management strategies, investing in early warning systems and prioritizing disaster preparedness, India can navigate this natural calamity more effectively. The collective efforts of governments, communities and international organizations are crucial. in creating a safer and more resilient future for the nation now it's time for the practice questions first of all prelims question consider the following statements one tamil nadu witnessed floods during winter months two sea flows is a warning system for flooding in chennai three floods happen due to natural causes only how many of the above statement or statements is or are correct only one only two only three or none and now mains question Discuss the recent measures initiated in disaster management by the government of India departing from the earlier reactive approach so that's all for today stay tuned for the next episode thanks for watching